Hello students, a very warm welcome to Baiju's classes. This is Nidhi and today we are going to discuss 26th February 2nd shift mathematics paper which was held this year for J means conducted by NTA. So, well, if you have given the paper then very well. If you haven't given the paper then before moving further and before going through the solutions, I request you guys to please solve the paper paper first of all such that when we actually go through the solutions you can check your mistakes on your own you might have got stuck in some question you might have made a calculation mistake or you have forgotten a concept which is also a possibility or a formula which is again a possibility so if you have done those kind of mistakes when we'll go through the solution you can actually check your mistakes and make an improvement then and there itself so it's quite important that you first attempt the paper on your own and then only go through the solutions. Clear? Okay. So before going through the solution part, let's discuss a bit about what the paper was about. Let's analyze the paper. So first of all, coming to the exam pattern, which was actually a bit different this year. It was an online mode test, but it was it was involving a change. Yes, there were three hours allotted to the paper, having three subjects, Max, Physics and Chemistry, equal weightage to all the three subjects. But it had 30 questions per subject, out of which you have to attempt only 25. That's correct. This was the change which NTA made this time. And it is first in the history of Jamie's that you have got an option. There were 20 single choice questions, which obviously you have to attempt. But... Out of 10 numerical answer type, there were a choice. There was a choice. You have to attempt only 5 out of 10. They have given this choice this year. And therefore, you have to attempt only 75 questions. Marking scheme was almost same as it was last year also. There were 4 marks allotted for MCQs if you have done the question correct. And minus 1 allotted if you have done it wrong. While for numerical answer type, plus 4 was allotted if you have done the question correct, but there was no negative marking. So this was on the safer side, right? Okay, so overall making it to the 300 marks paper. I hope if you have given the paper, you might be scoring very good marks. Now coming to the mathematics part analysis. You already know the chapters or the main parts in which we can divide our mathematics. They are generally five. I have algebra, then coordinate geometry, calculus, trigonometry and miscellaneous. This year, there were 11 questions which were asked from calculus while coordinate geometry saw only six questions and algebra, eight questions. Trigonometry, as usual, there were two questions and in miscellaneous, there were three questions. And guys, trust me, I can say this. This attempt or let's say this shift paper which was held on 26th Feb was a bit on a difficult side as compared to rest of the papers which were held in various shifts in February. I agree to that totally. It had, the paper had actually some very good questions also and I was actually very happy when I saw those questions. They have increased their notch a bit higher. Yes, NDA has done that and congratulations to the team. And Though the questions, some questions were, I would say, difficult or they were new based on the uh, general tendency or the general trend, which uh, J means, uh, or let's say, which uh, J means paper generally come around. But there were obviously some easy questions and moderate questions. If we can target those questions or if you can target those questions, you can easily score good marks. Given the paper was on difficult side. There were six difficult questions. Let's see quickly the analysis part also. So these are the easy questions. There were around 13 easy questions in the paper. And then we have moderate questions, which were around 11. And six questions were on the difficult side. Four questions were from calculus, while two questions were from algebra, which were difficult. After this, let's quickly again see what was the chapter wise distribution also in algebra. How many questions were there which were easy from which chapter, which were difficult again from which chapter. So coming to the algebra part first, let's quickly break this down into the chapters. So the distribution was somewhat like this. Two questions of sequence and series were again on the tougher side as compared to normally. They don't ask all 
they don't ask questions of sequence and series on tougher side but they have made it this time and one question of sequence and series was easy there was no question of binomial theorem two questions were from matrices one was easy another was of the medium type or let's say from the moderate section moving further to our coordinate geometry the chapter wise distribution was somewhat somewhat like this there were one there was one question only from conics and that too from the ellipse part there were actually three questions from vectors and 3d one was easy, two were easy basically and one was moderate and two questions were from circles no question of straight line was asked this time moving further trigonometry again had only two questions and they came actually from one was from itf inverse trigonometric functions another was from trigonometric equation so this obviously coordinate geometry and trigonometry rounds up to easy to moderate level we can obviously attempt the questions and if you know the concept if you actually do the question in a right manner you will definitely get the answer and score good marks coming to the next section which was calculus calculus had actually four questions or let's say four questions from the on the tougher side there were definite integration two questions came both were on the difficult side while one was while i have one question from area under the curves which were on, which was on the moderate side application of derivatives again had three questions two were on the difficult side one was easy there were some questions def uh, of differential equation every year one question comes from differential equation there was a question on limits a question on continuity and another question on relation on functions so obviously we can target these easy to moderate level questions rather than moving to the difficult section now this question many times the students ask how are we going to analyze whether the question is easy or difficult well that obviously takes time but if you continue to keep this practice whenever you practice at home or whenever you solve the questions what you have to do is always go through the paper first or any homework whichever you are doing at your home or maybe in or your classes always go through the paper first read out the questions mark the questions which you find actually are on the easier side and attempt those questions first and this practice you can have for rest of the subjects which are physics and chemistry also when you target easy questions and when actually you start getting the answers you will realize on your own that your confidence has boosted up which is actually required when you solve the paper if you have a high confidence if suppose if you have solved around 30 questions in a less time and you found those questions easy including all the three subjects i'm talking about then for the left of the question then for the left of the questions you will be more confident and more energetic to attempt the paper so guys i request you always whenever you attempt any paper make it a habit of going through the paper first mark the questions which are easy or which you find easy they might be based on any concept which you have read and you are very well versed very well versed with it or when you go through a question you actually get an idea what the question is asking about it's just asking about the arrangement of some numbers which is actually easy or maybe some chapter in which you are actually strong so obviously you have to attempt those questions first and then you should go to the difficult side okay and the last was obviously our miscellaneous part which had three questions there were there was one question from stats one from mathematical reasoning and one was from probability so all the questions were on easy to moderate side so overall what we have just seen is that we had 13 questions which were easy and 11 questions which were moderate six were difficult if we target only easy to moderate also it makes up to 24 questions which is not bad and given you have an option you have to attempt only 25 questions out of this so what we can say is that at least 20 questions could have been on easy to moderate side when you have attempted the paper right this is the minimum figure and if you do this in a proper planned way and you get the answers you will definitely score very good marks so this was the analysis on the difficulty side and as well as on the chapter distribution the weightage wise now coming to quickly 11th and 12th class distribution 12th class again 
and so trend more percentage is asked or more number of questions are asked from 12th class syllabus and less are asked from 11th one so 11th had only 43 percent around 43 percent of the questions were from the 11th class syllabus while 12th were around 56 percent but again guys i'm saying this thing you have to practice both 11th and 12th class portions in a well-defined manner you cannot give your priority to 11th class or 12th class because whenever they ask questions they might ask some easy questions from 11th class and some difficult questions from 12th class so if you are well prepared your 100 percent syllabus is done and you can and if you target basically easy to moderate kind of questions your score definitely will increase it will be much higher as compared to when you target difficult set of questions first clear okay so this was the analysis of the paper now let's quickly move on to the discussion part well in this question it's saying let l be a line which is obtained from intersection of two planes so they're definitely a question of 3d plane equation is x plus 2y plus z is equal to 6 and another plane is y plus 2z is equal to 4 Further, they have said if point alpha, beta and gamma, that is my point P, is foot of perpendicular from 3, 2, 1 on the line L, then what is the value of 21 times of alpha plus beta plus gamma? Okay, so that means I have to obtain the alpha, beta and gamma to get the answer, first of all, right? Now, to get alpha, beta and gamma, I have to find equation of line L then only I can find foot of perpendicular. And what is L? L is line which is intersection of two planes. So I have my two planes, let's say somewhat like this. And this is my line L which is intersection of these two planes. Now comes the question, how do we get this line L? I have two planes with me. I have to get the common line of intersection. How do we solve it? Well, for this, we have to remember that to get an equation of line, what do we need? In 3D, we need two things. One is the point which is lying on the line and another thing is the parallel vector or the direction ratio. That's correct. So we need a point which is lying on this line as well as the direction ratio or the parallel vector of the line. Right? Okay. Now, first of all, let's quickly find the point and then we'll concentrate upon finding the direction ratio. Clear? Okay. So how to get the point? For that, I'll solve these two planes. But the question is how we can solve. We have only two equations while the variables are three. So what do we do generally is out of x, y, and z, we assign a value to any one of the variable. You can assign a value to x or y or z. And what is the easiest value to be assigned? Zero, that's correct. So here I'm assigning z is equal to zero. You can assign zero value to x or y or you can assign any other value also. The final answer will not change. Trust me. Okay, so I am giving z as zero. That means if I have y plus 2z minus 4 is equal to zero and here I put z as zero, I am going to get y value as 4. And if I put my y value as 4 and z value as zero in my first plane, I am going to get x plus twice of y that is 4 plus z that is 0 minus 6 is equal to 0. So my x value is going to come out as minus 2. Clear? So that means I have got a point on this line. So these are the planes. Let's say, let me plot it again. This is my line and I have got a point on this line. Let's say this point is minus 2 comma 4 comma 0. Clear? Now what I need? Well, I need direction ratio of this line or the parallel vector. Now, how can I get the parallel vector? Suppose if I have two planes and a line is intersection of these two planes. So, can I say that my line will be actually perpendicular to the normals of the plane? My line definitely if it's lying in a plane, it has to be perpendicular to the normal, right? So I can say that if my planes are P1 and P2 and their normals are N1 and N2, my line definitely will be perpendicular to both the normals, isn't it? So if I have to get a vector, 
let's say this is my parallel vector b vector so if i have to get my b vector which is perpendicular to normals of the plane how can i get that well a perpendicular vector to let's say n1 vector and n2 vector is given as n1 cross n2 directly right so i have my n1 vector as what i have my n1 vector as for the first plane i have it as 1 2 1 similarly my n2 vector for the second plane will be 0 1 and 2 right so quickly taking its cross it's going to give me 3 i cap then i'll have minus 2 j cap and then i'll have plus k cap so now i have parallel vector to the line i have the point so now i can write my equation of the line right so let's quickly say this that my line l equation can be written as x minus of minus 2 that's going to make it as x plus 2 divided by my x component of the direction ratio that is 3 is equal to y minus 4 divided by the y1 that is minus 2 is equal to z minus 0 divided by 1 this will be equation of the line clear okay so we have got the b vector as 3 i cap minus 2 j cap plus k cap is it clear now if i have my line l that means i can always write a point on this line by equating it to lambda right so let me quickly write my point so it's going to become point p which is obviously my foot of perpendicular lying on the line l it's going to become 3 lambda minus 2 comma 4 minus 2 lambda comma lambda this will be the point is this much clear guys okay and we have to find foot of perpendicular this p point is basically foot of perpendicular from the point let's say q which is 3 comma 2 comma 1 okay so now it comes the question how should i get this foot of perpendicular well for that i have my line already with me sorry i have my line l already with me that means i already have the parallel vector which is running parallel to the line what is the parallel vector well that is b vector which we have just found out and if my pq is perpendicular to this b vector or this line what condition do we have when two lines or let's say two vectors are perpendicular that the dot is zero right so dot i have to make zero let me write my qp vector dot b vector as zero so my qp vector dot b vector is equal to zero this is the condition i have to apply and we already have qp vector as what we can write qp vector as i have p i have q so that definitely my qp vector is going to come out as 3 lambda minus 5 comma if i write my qp direction uh, ratio it's 3 lambda minus 5 comma minus 2 lambda plus 2 comma lambda minus 1 this will be my direction ratio of qp clear i have my b vector that means i have my direction ratio of the line as 3 minus 2 and 1 is it clear so now i have to just make their dot as zero and from there we'll get lambda and if i get lambda definitely i'll get my point p which is what is being asked in the question clear okay so proceeding further i can say what we have just done is that i have written qp dot b is zero this was my b vector which was 3 minus 2 and 1 and we have obtained qp vector so quickly writing down the product let me write again qp vector for you it came out as 3 lambda minus 5 comma minus 2 lambda plus 2 comma lambda minus 1 okay so guys now i am writing the dot product and making it equal to 0 so it's going to become 3 times of 3 lambda minus 5 Minus two times of minus two lambda plus two plus lambda minus one is equal to zero. Solving this, it's going to become nine plus four. That is thirteen lambda 
plus lambda. So it's going to be overall 14 lambda. Then I'll have minus 15 minus 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. So it's going to be 14 lambda is equal to 20. Value of lambda came out as 10 by 7. So if this I substitute in my P, which is 3 lambda minus 2, the X coordinate. So it's going to be 30 by 7 minus 2 comma y coordinate is minus 2 lambda plus 4 so that is 4 minus 20 by 7 and last is nothing but 10 by 7 right and this basically is equal to alpha beta gamma which they have mentioned in the question so my alpha value actually is going to come out as 16 by 7 my beta value will come out as 8 by 7 and my gamma value is nothing but 10 by 7 right so when I write the value of 21 times of alpha plus beta plus gamma, so it's going to give me 21 times of alpha plus beta plus gamma is going to become 21 times of, when I add these three, it's going to become 16 plus 8 plus 10 divided by 7. What is 16 plus 8 plus 10? Well, that becomes 21 multiplied by 34 by 7 or it's equal to 34 into 3. And when you multiply, the value actually comes out as 102, which will be the final answer. So again, I would say the question was not easy. It was on a moderate type because it involved two concepts. First, we have to find a line, which is intersection of two planes. And then we have to find foot of perpendicular to get my 21 times of alpha plus beta plus gamma value. So definitely question was on lengthier side, but not difficult. It was not a difficult question. Maybe you can keep it on the moderate side, but since the question was lengthy, we can keep this question aside for a time and begin or let's say attempt rest of the questions, which is actually required, right? Okay, so the final answer is 102. And when we check the options, the answer will become D. This question is from sequence and series and obviously the question was on a bit difficult side. Here it involved exponential series. Yes, it involved that because obviously you can see the answer is given in terms of E and 1 by E. So definitely my exponential series has to be involved. But you have to also work upon this term, the general term which they have given to us. How are we going to do this? Well, let's see. So this is the question which is given to me. So what I'm going to take, since in denominator, I, if I start putting my values of m, n, I'll get odd numbers. I'm going to get 3 factorial, then 5 factorial, 7 factorial, and so on, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to take this 2n plus 1 as r. I'm going to substitute to n plus 1 as r. And from here, I can say that my n value is going to become r minus 1 by 2. And one more thing I can say that my r values will be 3, 5, 7, all the odd numbers except 1. Odd natural numbers except 1. Right? Okay, so let's quickly use this substitution. From here, we got the value of n as r minus 1 by 2. Substituting in the expansion, or let's say in the summation, it's going to become n which is in place of n is equal to 1 to infinity I'll have r is equal to 3 then 5 and 7 and so on all the numbers till infinity then I'll have my terms as in place of n you have to just put r minus 1 by 2 in numerator so, so it's going to become r minus 1 by 2 whole square plus 6 times of r minus 1 by 2 plus 10 divided by I'll have 2n plus 1 which is actually r factorial. Clear? Now what? Well now I'll try to simplify the numerator. Why are we uh, why are we actually doing this? Because what we are trying to do is we are trying to obtain the exponential series. The series whose summation actually is known to us. So what is the exponential series? Suppose if I write expansion of e raised to x I have to get terms like 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial and so on. So I should have my terms like 1 by 1 factorial, 1 by 2 factorial, let's say 2 by 1, 2 by 2 factorial and so on. Somewhat like that. So that means I have to split my numerator such that I get some factorial term summation and that too in reciprocal. That is my target for which we are doing this. Clear? Okay. 
So when I try to expand my numerator part, when I actually uh, take LCM and everything, it's going to become r square minus 2r plus 1 plus 4 times of 3r minus 3 plus 40 whole divided by 4 times of r factorial and there is obviously a summation here, right? So it's going to become summation again. R values you have to remember are all the odd numbers 3, 5, 7 till infinity and your terms will look like somewhat r square. Then you'll have minus 2r plus 12r. So that is going to become 10r. The constant will be minus 12 plus 40. Minus 12 plus 40 will be 28 and plus 1 is going to become 29. Divided by r factorial, I am taking 1 by 4 common out of the summation. Well, now you will say that ma'am, we have again obtained a summation like this, which was originally given to us, though it was a bit different in numerator, I have r factorial instead of 2n plus 1 factorial. What should I do now? Well, now what we'll do, we'll now try to split the numerator such that some terms cancel from denominator. How? R square, first let me concentrate on R square. R square can be written as R multiplied by R minus 1 plus R. Right? Then I'll have plus 10 R. So R plus 10 R definitely is going to become equal to 11 R plus 29. And now I'm going to split my R factorial everywhere in all the three terms. So it's going to be R factorial in all these terms. Clear? So it's going to be 1 by 4, then I'll have summation. Now guys, can you tell me what is the first term? Well, the first term is r, r minus 1 by r factorial. What is left? Well, r factorial formula, you already know it's r, r minus 1, r minus 2, and so on till 1. So if I cancel r and r minus 1, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1 upon r minus 2 factorial, right? Okay, then I'll have 11 times of r divided by r factorial is going to give me 1 upon r minus 1 factorial and then I have 29 times of 1 upon r factorial. And now I'll put the values of r which were odd from 3, 5 and so on till infinity. So my final series actually comes out as 1 by 4. In the first term, that is my 1 upon r minus 2 factorial, if I put let's say r as 3, so my first term is going to become 1 by 1 factorial, right? When I put R as 5 here, it's going to be 1 by 3 factorial. When I put R as 7 here, it's going to be 1 by 5 factorial and so on. So this is my first summation. Then I'll have plus 11 times of in R minus 1 factorial. Again, when I substitute R values as 3, 5 and 7 and so on. So I'm going to get... 1 by 2 factorial, 1 by 4 factorial, 1 by 6 factorial, isn't it? And coming to the last term, well, last term I have 29 times of 1 by r factorial, which on substitution is going to give me 1 by 3 factorial, 1 by 5 factorial, and so on till infinity. So these are the terms. So these are the terms which will be there. Clear? I have three different, different summations running. Now, what we are going to do? Well, now, as I already told you, we will involve exponential series summation. That is, e raised to x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial and so on till infinity. Now, my first term requires 1, 1 by 3 factorial, 1 by 5 factorial, while second requires the even part. That is, 1 by 2 factorial, 1 by 4 factorial and so on. So, to get 1 by 1 factorial, 1 by 3 factorial, 1 by 2 factorial in all these terms, I'll put x as 1. So, it's going to give me e is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial. This one actually can be written as 1 by 1 factorial, right? And similarly, I'll also put x as minus 1. So, when I do that, I'll get another series, which is 1 minus, again, 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 3 factorial and till infinity, it's going to go alternate plus minus plus. Now, my first term has odd terms. So, that means in these two expansions, if I want to get my odd terms, that is 1 by 1 factorial, 1 by 3 factorial, what I have to do? 
well i have to subtract right so when i subtract these two i am going to get e minus 1 by e is equal to twice of 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial and so on all the odd terms are going to come right so i can say that my first term is going to become 1 by 4 times of e minus 1 by e by 2. Is this clear? This will be the first term. Okay, coming to the second, I want even terms over here. That is 1 by 2 factorial, 1 by 4 factorial, 1 by 6 factorial. Well, to get even terms in these two expansions, now I have to add. So, when I do that, I am going to get e plus 1 by e is equal to 2 plus twice of 1 by 2 factorial, 1 by 4 factorial and so on, right? But I want only 1 by 2 factorial, 1 by 4 factorial, 1 by 6 factorial. That means this 2, I can take it on that side, on my left hand side. So, it's going to give me 11 times of e plus 1 by e minus 2 divided by 2. Understood? And then I have 1 by 3 factorial, 1 by 5 factorial, 1 by 7 factorial. That means this term is actually being copied except the first term which is 1. So the value of this will become 29 times of, I'm going to get finally, e minus 1 by e minus 2 whole divided by 2. So, this will be the final expansion with me. And now, I have to just simplify this. So, you can clearly see that 1 by 8, we are getting common. It will be e plus 11e plus 29e minus 1 by e plus 11 by e minus 29 by e and minus twice of 11 plus 29. Right? Further, this can be written as 1 by 8 times of this part e plus 11e plus 29e. Well, that will be equal to 41e. Right? Okay. Coming on to the next part. The 1 by e part, I have minus 19 by e. And then this constant is basically 2 multiplied by 40. That is minus 80. Or I can further say that it's going to be 41e by 8 minus 19 by e into 1 by 8 minus 10. This is going to be the final answer. As you have already seen the proceeding and the steps which we have used, you know that the question was on difficult side, right? So again, I would say the same thing that in paper, if you find some of que some questions which are of the these kind, don't get disheartened. Always there will be a very good ratio of easy to moderate questions which you can target and score very good marks. Okay, so the final answer is with us and now if we see the options, we can say that answer is C.